sunset over the end times. Here in, uh, I don't know, is Binghamton, New York. Is it, uh, <laughs> is it paradise or hell? Or is it like one of those double-edged swords? So uh, it is now Friday night, July 15th, 2022, and I have had a very mixed uh, evening. I, I tried to combine dinner with a pile of fish dates and buying some used doors on Craigslist. Okay, I'm gonna let you take a guess which one was more successful. My new, the new love of my life that I met on Pile of Fish or buying two doors for the new tiny houses off of Craigslist and uh, uh, you dabble with that mystery. <laughs> that's a real, that, that's a real tough one, I know, guys. Uh, so anyway, I have been thinking a lot this afternoon about uh, about bullshit. And uh, good God, uh, just thinking of three stories that I have seen in the uh, mainstream media in the past. Hell, 24 hours, uh, certainly uh, 36 hours at the most. Now, of course, I already did that one about that weird public service announcement that they made in uh, New York City a couple of days ago that started out, what was it? So, so we have had a nuclear strike or there is so there has been a nuclear strike or something and uh sitting there telling you to go inside let's see if you are hit by a nuclear weapon go inside get away from the windows and stay there until your government tells you it's safe to go back outside. I, <laughs> you know, I mean, who the fuck? Do they honestly believe that anybody in the city of New York or on this planet has never seen a picture of Hiroshima? Uh, <laughs> Hiroshima was 1945 technology. Can you imagine what every building in New York City is going to look like if New York City is hit with a nuclear weapon? Uh, I'm not sure how easy it is going to be to go inside, particularly since there's not going to be a single uh, building left standing uh, anywhere in New York City or within a what a how many mile radius of New York City will there be no such thing as going inside and you are gonna have a long wait you will have a seriously long wait uh, for your government to tell you it's safe to go back outside uh, you know no, come on cut the bullshit what was the next one? Oh yes, the the number one story on the planet this afternoon is about uh, that senator, that Democratic senator from uh, West Virginia, somebody Munchkin or Senator Munchkin or something. I guess has dashed Joe Biden's hopes to save the planet and uh, the you know the mainstream media continuing to play this up like anything that Joe Biden uh, was going to do is going to do a fucking thing to save this planet and I love this quote from uh, this guy Podesta John Podesta I, I think John Podesta was somehow involved in uh, that
that Pizzagate conspiracy, that wacko conspiracy theory. I think that John Podesta was wrapped up in that whole uh, Pizzagate thing. So he was quoted as, what was his quote? It was a great quote about how Senator Munchkin is single hand, single handedly uh, has single handedly doomed humanity. Yes, that humanity is doomed because uh, some planet eating uh, you know whore for big oil and big coal if it's West Virginia uh, is uh, is not signing off on the Green New Deal. That, yeah, so when humanity is doomed, you can uh, thank uh, Senator Munchkin. And, and, and they're playing this with no trace of irony. Uh, talking about now they're because of this action and this and this it this part of the equation is true that there is zero chance there is now zero chance that uh, we are going to meet our Paris climate agreement goals by 2030 that uh, Senator Munchkin has completely uh, trashed any hope of meeting the Paris climate agreement commitments over the next eight years. And while that is a true statement, uh, of, of course, what John Podesta failed to mention is the Paris Climate Agreement is a fucking joke. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> and of course, you know, this whole thing was goddamn, it, it was all about solar, wind, and electric vehicles. Uh, saving the planet from fossil fuels. That, you know how it points out correctly that if we don't get all fossil fuels, we're fucked. This is a true statement. Uh, if we do not get all fossil fuels, we are fucked. Humanity and every earthling we share the planet with is fucked. But, you know, the inconvenient truth which is beginning to come out, the truth of the big green lies, of course, is if we do get off fossil fuels and move over to all of this goddamn, uh, these solar panels and wind turbines and electric vehicles with all their batteries and all of this shit, we're still fucked. That's the part they just uh, declined to mention that uh, if, if, if Joe Biden got everything he wanted, if that lying sack of shit, who I guess is getting ready to crank up all of these new oil and gas leases uh, in Alaska and in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, start pumping more oil than ever, Try, he's over there trying to twist Saudi Arabia's arm to uh, get more oil pumping over there. Uh, you know, that saved the planet, Mr. Climate Agenda, Joe Biden. Uh, if, if Joe Biden uh, did not actually, you know, if he actually kept to his campaign promises and did not pump one more drop of oil off of our federal lands, if not, if, if every oil and gas uh, well and coal mine on, on our public lands were shut down today uh, and everything in uh, Save the Planet, Joe, uh, was put into, he got everything on his plate that he wanted. Every fucking solar panel, every windmill, every electric vehicle, 
it would do nothing to save humanity and the planet from doom. Uh, this is the other part of the story that obviously you are not going to hear uh, in the mainstream media. Uh, but little by little, uh, the bright green lies stories, uh, you know, that little eco-pussy Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles was reading right off of the damn uh, mainstream media yesterday about these millions and millions and millions of these toxic solar panels uh, heading to landfills all over the planet over the next 10 years that the garbage dumps all over this planet are getting ready to be buried uh, under an ocean of uh, solar panels and wind turbine blades and, and, and all of this crap. Uh, so the mainstream media is slowly starting to wake up to the bright green lies. Uh, anyway, what was the last, the other one that I loved that uh, um, it might show up in the hopium roundup uh, tomorrow if uh, that little eco pussy does a hopium roundup tomorrow. Oh yeah, you know, all of this bullshit about, uh, you know, building a pipeline, a, a water pipe from the Mississippi River to California you know, to save California and, and pipe all of this water, these, what is it, 300 million gallons of water an hour or whatever. So anyway, I've been enjoying this raging debate in uh, the mainstream media, so I love that. I, I can't remember, this was just a letter to the editor. I honestly do not know if the guy is a master satirist or the single biggest clueless fucking moron to enter the debate. Now, we did start off his letter by agreeing that it was impractical to build a pipeline from the Mississippi River to California that there were just too many obstacles, engineering, physical, financial, wasn't going to happen. Even if it could happen, it would take 50 years. So uh, he understands that is a literal pipe dream. So instead, what he was suggesting, instead of a pipeline bringing water from the Mississippi River to put a hose, a hose uh, under the Pacific Ocean and bring water from the Pacific Northwest, you know, like the Columbia River and all of that water up there, the Pacific Northwest and uh, in a hose. And he was, you know, he was talking about uh, how this hose was going not just provide drinking water to 40 million people, but also for, you know, to uh, rescue California agriculture. And all we got to do is put a hose in uh, and bring it from... Uh, Seattle to uh, LA and all of our problems are solved. I, I read the letter twice. I honestly could not figure out if this uh, dude uh, was joking or not. Uh, I mean, this is how pathetic we've gotten. I know all about bringing a hose. I am, uh, 
you know, I've been uh, just desperately trying to keep my uh, pond from drying up here in the New York drought, and uh, we, you know, we've been sucking water out of the creek. Uh, through a hose uh, to try to keep the pond uh, w water level up, but of course now the creek's dry. Uh, <laughs> oh God, build a hose. Anywho's, the, just uh, this unadulterated horseshit. Uh, get inside. If you get hit by a nuclear bomb, get inside and stay inside until the government tells you it's safe to go outside. Uh, build a hose uh, from Seattle to LA and save the planet from fossil fuels by switching over to solar panels, windmills, and electric vehicles. There you go. This is a, of course, all three of these uh, stand the same chance. You have as much chance uh, surviving a nuclear attack by going inside than uh, LA has a chance of being saved uh, from a hose from Seattle and that this planet has a chance of uh, being saved by the Green New Deal. Uh, it, it, it's all equal level of unadulterated fucking horseshit. So, uh, get out there and save the planet. Uh, any way you see fit, whatever makes you sleep better tonight is the one I would go with. Uh, so anyway, I will, uh, I have to get my new Craigslist doors back to the tiny house and figure out how to ditch this latest lunatic from a uh, pile of fish. Good guy. That's another story for another day. My latest pile of fish adventure. <laughs> Jesus, we're so fucked. I need a drink. Bye, guys.